after effects tutorial on showing you guys how to create your own very cool sort of uh i guess really clean um gradient startup screen is what i'm gonna probably call it uh so pretty much just i'm gonna show you guys like this is not gonna take long whatsoever like this is very uh i don't know what i would it's very just kind of step by step kind of thing right so uh, it's just really just the text placements and uh what i'll I, what i'll probably do is i'll give you guys this because this is like a really quick sort of thing that i did um just for the sake of like you know you guys being able to kind of do these really quick um you know text because i believe when it comes to making things clean sometimes it's all about the typography work that you do is which kind of means like if you're going to be vertical stacking horizontal stacking which is like this is vertical stacking this is more or less horizontal stacking put it in the middle put it in the far left add some little elements like a little dot 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 um, so yeah, just come to something. I'll probably just give you guys this just a really quick little, uh, I guess little, you know, what do you, I don't know, not 200 likes though. We'll give you guys this for the 200 likes. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's pretty much typography, very simple. And plus like a little background that is very, very nice little simple pattern. And what I did to use that was my brushes. The, uh, align brush pack is what I use. I end up using this brush right here. <clears throat> very easy, very quick little brush hits. Just to like to have, just so it's not just black, right? Like this is okay. It's just, it's a little bit too clean in the sense where it looks like it's almost like just nothingness um so just adding this little element here just kind of like vibrance it up just that quite little bit with just a little quick uh what is opacity 25 percent opacity right so uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed today's video today um because after i should uh, show you guys how to do this basically i'm gonna move it on right into photoshop and just uh excuse me uh, after effects and i'll show you guys how to do some really quick very simple little things that you can do just to make it you know pop out a little more you can just have this uh you know blank and basically i'm gonna have it just do something like this you know like blank so it's like starting soon so something's just moving around and then uh just like move around the gradient here and it's just make it look as pretty as possible as simple as easy uh as simple as as simply as possible <laughs> as simple as possible and and really easy anyway all right so let's go get this thing going and uh yeah 20 likes on the video you can see it down below as always guys i'm just jump right into the photoshop part and i'll hop right into the after effects right after all right guys so let's go and get this thing going right here right now before i start really quick also if you find it i guess if you find it like fit for your you know your own style your own like kind of vibe or whatever for your starting soon screen and you really like this or you say i want to add more do not be afraid to add more if you find it you need to add some like purple glow in the background because it's what it's what needs to be done you know, that's pretty sick um but i mean like whatever fine <laughs> whatever you find is like necessary just don't be afraid to do it as well as also if, if i don't have any of this um done i guess uh in the sense of like what i you know just, just wait a second if i just take i'm trying to take this word soon it's not letting me click on it jesus right okay if i just like type in twitter.com slash so hq you guys can also go follow that uh oops okay what I will go ahead and do is if you kind of have like maybe like three or so social medias, don't be afraid to like put Twitter.com, Facebook, I don't know, and then maybe your in, your Instagram, your, you know, your YouTube, whatever other social medias that you personally have. Don't be afraid to like kind of like shrink it down, kind of make, make it look pretty. Don't don't forget, give it spacing. Do not make it as big as like this. This is just awkward. Also, just kind of just, you know, you just, just don't make it so big. Once you see it once, you have to see it again kind of thing, right? Um uh yeah but yeah so basically let's just get this thing going i don't know i'm so like giggly today i don't know i mean because i'm kind of like tired um anyway so let me go ahead and listen, let's get this thing going i'm gonna keep every this i'm gonna keep every bit of my little mistakes this is freaking hilarious to me um okay so i'm gonna drag this little typography piece in so like i said i'm gonna give you guys this little psd i'll name it like i don't know what i'll name it but regardless it'll be like you know kind of like typography setup or whatever um but yeah you don't always you don't have to take one of these for the example there's nothing really that i just personally did for me to like go over or something like that all it really is is this little gradient overlay with uh inner glow which is very very simple to change around as well so if you find that you don't want the word starting soon maybe you want like streams you know just getting going or stream start whatever kind of phrase or whatever kind of action words you want to apply to this text go ahead and do so kind of thing right <clears throat> this is just basically more or less kind of like a uh, an example of vertical stacking horizontal stacking etc etc right so i'm gonna take this text in here so okay i'm gonna just go ahead now we're just gonna go ahead and just do the uh let's just do the quick little bar thing right so the for the bar all i ended up doing was just using rectangle marquee tool Clicking outside the canvas on the left hand side, dragging all the way to the right hand side, making sure you go all off the canvas basically, just so you make sure you have all the corners, you know, hit. Um, for you, just simply just click in whatever your foreground color is. It doesn't really matter at all because you're just gonna press Alt Backspace. It'll quick fill, uh, quick fill any color that you have in already. Um, now what you're gonna do is if you hold, uh, if you have V on your keyboard, right? If you, press the unit keyboard excuse me it'll automatically bring you back to the movement tool you might already know that but you might not know if you hold control if you look right here 
<clears throat> this says auto select if you hold control right you can see it's just like you know kind of like checking just kind of checking itself so basically if i hold control if i click around it'll actually click on the layer that i'm like looking for so if you ever have any trouble finding your layers and whatnot don't be afraid to hold, you know press the view in your keyboard go to the movement tool hold control and click around for that actual uh layer um so yeah otherwise just also make sure it's not on group it's on layer because it's i think it's a default group and you might find yourself in a little bit of trouble if you have like, things in a group um so yeah, I'm gonna click on the word soon because it has this grading on this. So basically the only thing you have to really be worrying about right now is the fact of what you're gonna, you know, kind of like change your gradients around. Uh, we can just use like an orange to you know, yellow, this nice little orange here, you know, orange, to like a darker orange, like blue to green. I don't know, I have a lot of different like gradients and whatnot. It all just depends on what colors you like. Don't just look at maybe like complementary colors. It's all about color theory and whatnot, like what looks good with each other. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You can just choose whatever color you guys definitely want. So don't be afraid to go ahead and just try it out and whatnot, right? Um, inner glow, right? This little inner glow is just blend mode screen. 50% will pass. It will just make it even for you guys. Um, just like so, right? And then size four and press OK. Pretty cool, right? Reason why I clicked on the word soon is I'm just going to basically right click uh, layer via copy the layer style. So copy the layer style, right click, copy layer style. And if I just go back to this little rectangle here, I'm going to right click on this layer and then paste the layer style. Simply just drag it nice far down. I don't like it to be that thick. I just personally like it to uh, be, be uh, kind of like, you know, I guess sleek in a way. Um, let me just make sure I have this kind of where I want to have it. Obviously right about there. Those rulers, by the way, all I ended up doing was just like clicking on the outside. Press Control R to bring them up. Click on the outside of them or click on the, the ruler itself, right? And then just kind of like hover over where you believe the middle is. And you'll see this little snapping feature. You see this like snapping? So where you believe the middle is, it's just like this little snapping feature that happens. You see? So... Very simple, just you just let go of it and it comes right back. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer below everything, below the text and whatnot, and just add those very quick little simple. I'm gonna make the, the my foreground color here white. Very quick little simple just like hits of this brush that'll just add just like just nice little spacing. Right? Just very simple. I would not recommend you guys doing this. Um, this brush, by the way, like I said, it's my uh, stock brush pack that ended up used. I don't know if I said that. Uh, stock brush pack for five bucks actually has almost like 500 or so. And any updates that I do for this pack actually just gets uh, updated automatically for you guys in your email. But um, I would not suggest doing stuff like this. You don't want to fill the space. You just want space to just kind of be like uh, not, uh, uh, empty in a way as well, but kind of like heavily like breathable, right? You know what I mean? Just kind of, you don't you know, separate it very evenly. So this is enough. You don't want to have to click drag you know you don't have to do any of that don't make it too fill because that's not the point um however if that's what you want to do you want to do you know kind of thing you know what i mean so uh yeah i already have this one here so all i gotta do now is change your blend mode from normal to overlay and then change your opacity about 25 or so and i'd say that's pretty damn good that's fine it looks really good and uh, last but not least is this little part right here, right? You can see this little little uh, little box here that I have. And what we're going to be doing is like making it look like it's loading. So if you guys want to do this as well, all you have to do is take your round uh, rectangle tool. This tool here, we're going to kind of like do it like so. Also, if you find that your radius here, you see how it's not as rounded as I want it to be. Right up here, I'm going to change it to about 10. So when I change it, I'm going to have to do it over again, unfortunately. Uh, because I don't think this unless this works over here actually I think I can just change it on the properties itself not up here But if I click on the layer you see I'm clicking on the layer I have the properties table come up if you don't have that Windows properties right and if I just click right here I want to make it 10 press 10 there we go press okay so that's what I want oh I didn't even do it again but yeah you see how it gets a little more rounded that's what I kind of want I don't want like three I would say 10 is a pretty good number but if you want to change it up here first and then apply it you guys can definitely do that as well um, now that you've done that, if you guys don't know about Illustrator, it's basically the same exact thing how they fill in color and have a stroke as well. Uh, two different opposite sort of things. So you have the stroke color that's already highlighted, basically. I already have this fill color that's turned off. So this little red kind of slash through the actual box just means it's turned off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a different color. This little top right on the little uh, color picker here, I'm going to click on it. We're going to just, with this eyedropper tool, select the background color. The background color, by the way, is hex code 0C. 0 f11 if you guys didn't say it already it's basically like this kind of like a black but has a little bit of a blue tint with it so you can see like the difference uh maybe not right here but whatever right just click the background first really quick right and then just take this little little white dot here just drag it a little bit further down simply right press okay what it'll do it is what if i zoom out really quick you can see that this block this box right here is kind of like a little more darker than um I guess like the background itself so it kind of looks like it's almost embedded or like indented in the actual background I definitely like how that looks and uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the key on my keyboard to bring up this little uh, Kind of this little top part here again while you're selecting on the layer 
go to stroke we're gonna go to uh color picker and we're just gonna select and hover over a color i'm gonna go to like the middle of the gradient starts transitioning and just click right in the middle of it and press okay so it look like this right so it look pretty good it's more it's definitely more uh, purple than anything but if you guys wanted to you can also press the unit keyboard turn off the stroke right if i turn off the stroke it'll just be like this very simple little box if i double click on this then i can just go to uh stroke here change my size to about two maybe or maybe one I don't know, maybe like two for now. And then you go to color type, you can actually drop down the color and use the gradient. So if I just uh, click on gradient, bring up the gradient table, and you you know use the same gradient as before. If you guys didn't know, when you select that gradient, if you wanted to for the actual, uh, the starting soon, if you press new, it'll make a new gradient for you. So that's what you could definitely do. So I already have that here. I'm gonna press okay. And I can have a little gradient right there. So it, it doesn't have to be a solid color. It can also be a gradient if you guys wanted to as well. And then last but not least, make a new layer. <laughs> we'll just make it a perfect uh, square if you guys didn't know how to do that just click right you just click once and then hold shift and I'll make it a perfect square I'm gonna kind of put it right in the middle here I would say this is pretty good for now for just for the sake of the tutorial I'm gonna press alt backspace quick fill it in with any color whatsoever because it doesn't really matter um, because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the word soon if I don't I probably already have it already saved but right click uh, copy layer style go back to this little image here you know how to do it right control click and go back to it and then right click on that layer and then paste that layer style that way you can have this nice cool little gradient on the little loading kind of like dots i guess you would say shrink that now we'll just group this together for now let's zoom it out so it kind of looks like it looks like a little bit too boxy if you find it just kind of like maybe touching the areas too uh too close to the i guess the outsides i would definitely recommend you to kind of hold alt and shift take a corner move it in that way it keeps in that that middle area here but it also just kind of get away from the side so looks a little bit better that way I think it does and if I wanted to I can just bring this in a little bit maybe right put this in the middle <clears throat> and that'll kind of like be it right so yeah if this isn't it for you you can, like I said you can just add some little uh you know your sponsor logos or you know your whatever your, your social media or your background here it doesn't have to just be this it can be like your logo if you wanted to right kind of just like if you can make a pattern I don't know if you guys ever watched my uh I'll put a tutorial in the description for you guys to actually watch as well for that kind of like does this cool little pattern kind of simplistic video I don't know if maybe you guys saw it, but you can do something like this You know what I mean if you had like a pattern I don't have a pattern set I'm not gonna really do it right now because I already had a video on that But you can be a you know word it can be your logo It doesn't have to just be this cool little simple little uh like you know pattern here You know what I mean don't be afraid to try something out um, but yeah, once you have this done, make sure you guys, this is the, this is the key component before I move it into Illish, uh, after effects, excuse me. Um, be sure to name everything. Uh, also be sure that nothing's in a group. So this right here is going to come out of group. Um, so it's going to be kind of weird. Like you put things in a group, but you have to take it out. Yes, because it's going to be a lot easier for you guys when you have to actually make a composition in after effects. So take everything out of a group, make sure you name everything. All this stuff is basically already named this here. I'll just keep that. That's fine. Um, this right here, we'll name it like bar. This right here is gonna have to come out. And for this, we'll just make it like, the, we'll just number it, right? We'll number it to like where it is. So this is one, so one, two, three, and then four. So name all those. Those are now named. This right here, we're gonna call this slide bar or loading bar, right? And then logo copy, let's delete that. And this is just a pattern, we'll call it pattern. For the background this right here we would delete that but that's for just like the this is actually the template that i had in the original uh I don't, i'm not gonna delete that but once you name that it'll make it way 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 easier for you guys to actually select certain things when you put them in after effects just so you guys can get some context it'll look like this right so that way everything is already named for you and if you don't it looks like this you have to actually open it up and another composition and if you don't know after effects is going to be maybe a little bit complicated for you so i would just stay away from doing that only reason is because that's where i have that little blue layer here to kind of put the word stream in blue that's that's why um so yeah basically just kind of name everything uh, take as much out of a group as possible it'll just make your life way way easier and uh, when that's done simply file save as save it as normal psd and just save it in a, uh, a place that you're going to definitely be able to find it um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and move into after effects and like i said once again please add if you want to add otherwise i kind of think it looks kind of clean with just the gradients themselves and uh yeah let's just jump right into this thing just kind of the after effects part and uh hope you guys enjoy so far all right, guys. So once you have all of your layers all named and ready to go, um, this is the tutorial one right here. This is the actual group that I want to actually use because this is the one I already have um, spent a little time on, right? Just a little more time on, and this is the one I'm going to basically be using. So, right when you already told you guys how to save it on Save As, I'm going to jump right into After Effects, and then to basically get this thing going, you want to go to Composition, New Composition. 
make sure your frame rate is at 60 frames uh that's basically going to help you guys out for like kind of like numbering things if it's at 30 frames that's half a second if it's at 60 frames that's a full second um kind of easier to read in that way also your width and your height should be the same exact as the document size in uh, uh photoshop which should be 1920 by 1080 and you want to press okay then to bring in your psd you go to uh just right click somewhere on this empty canvas here go to uh import file and uh it should be starting soon template is what the name is psd import <clears throat> now your import kind here my, my my throat by the way has been killing me so if you understand why i'm like coughing a lot it's just because my, my throat I, I have water i should probably be drinking it um mm -hmm. oh jesus okay so your input kind should be on default uh footage but you want to change it to composition retain layer size that's going to basically retain it on the 1920 by 1080p uh resolution all that good stuff right so you want to click on that then your layer options enable uh excuse me editable layer style should be what should be done because it's going to give you guys individual layer styles which is what you definitely want so press ok <clears throat> it's going to give you this composition right here i just pointed just saying i just pointed um that you can definitely okay we're going to click on this right here double click on this right it'll open up the starting soon template uh, composition, which is gonna be what you definitely want. So now that this is all here, I just realized you probably don't need to do file a new composition. You probably just had to click over here and import. Whatever, you just, now you know how to make a new composition. Um, so yeah, first things first, is the one thing I wanna really honestly show you guys is this little blinking animation that kind of just makes the loading bar look like it's blinking. Hopefully I gave you guys a little bit of a preview in the beginning of the actual video. Um, by the way, as well, if you want to add audio, you can add audio. If you want to add like special effects that you possibly know, like Saber, the electricity kind of stuff, you can do that. Honestly, as well, I was having a different idea. I was like, just, I don't want to make it too complicated for the video though. It really isn't complicated at all, but you can take like rectangles, kind of have these rectangles, maybe they have the same gradient as the starting soon word. Right? and just have like rectangles just like fly through you know have one like come in this direction like one in this direction out of the canvas and just to kind of like just show movement um but that's just like it's kind of like it's so bare bones so basic that i feel like i have to say it but just for the sake of just like giving you guys ideas those little basic things that you do just kind of make the production value of the starting soon vibe kind of like flow you know or if you want to type in like maybe animated background um, loop footage in like Google you can get some really cool loop footage that you put in the background and you don't have to have this you can just have the word starting soon and then you import that in there uh, import from Photoshop to uh, After Effects with no background and you'll just be transparent so there's different ideas I just want to like kind of put out there in the world for you guys to kind of go ahead and you know make more of the, uh, the 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 very bare bones but also very clean and professional look that I'm doing for you guys today so um, this number three here, it should be this little third dot. So we're gonna basically make making this blink, just like how it's actually looking right here, uh, just like this. We're just kind of kind of make it blink, but more or less kind of fade in. So the way I'm gonna basically be doing that is this little simple animation trick by taking your opacity of the actual layer in After Effects, go from 100, 0, 100, 0, etc. Right. So to go to number three here, to automatically go to opacity, there's a shortcut. If you press T on your keyboard, as you see right now, it has the word opacity. For any reason that you do not know how to go, maybe your T button's broken, that would suck. Um, take the layer, this little drop down here, just do so. Go to transform, do so. And then your rotation, excuse me, I want rotation, I want opacity, that's where it's gonna be. But, like I said, you can also press T on your keyboard and just bring it up, just like so. So, zero frames, zero seconds. We're gonna click on this little stopwatch here. That's gonna give our, our first keyframe, which is right here, right? You see the little blue dot? That's our first keyframe. So. Uh, right here, it's already at 100% opacity. That's what we want. So I'm gonna go to the uh, the half a second, which is 30 frames. So if I just see right here or right here, 30 frames, and it's perfectly on it. Oh fuck, <laughs> 30 frames, just like so. So I'm gonna take this opacity, go from 100, just take my mouse, go left, or just type in the word zero, whatever, and that's gonna basically go from now 100, and it's gonna slowly fade down to being not seen anymore. So uh, relax, CC cleaner, little me. Um, one frame here, uh, should be 100 frames, you know, like this is about to be 60. It's going to turn into a one. Um, that's one full second. So you want to basically go to like, you know, you know, zero 30, one, one 30, two, two 30, just kind of just understand that's how that's basic numbers. I'm pretty sure you guys understood that, but for the few people who probably didn't, I got your back. Um, okay. So one second here, you should take your opacity and this should now be a hundred. You can just literally just take it, drag it right. Right, and also make a new keyframe for you every single time as long as you made that first initial keyframe in the beginning, which you should have done. So you can see it goes from zero and then it goes back up to 100% opacity. That's definitely what you definitely want. So 
this cool little thing about animation and stuff like that in After Effects, one of, the, one of the most used things in After Effects just for animation purposes is Easy Ease, which messes around with the actual, I guess you would say, speed of where, you know, like from point A to point B of a, uh, what do you call this? Keyframe. Um, so from this point here, which is 100% opacity, I just spit all over my freaking, that was disgusting, sorry. 100% um, opacity for this first keyframe. And then for the second keyframe is zero. So you can change the speed in which these two keyframes interact with each other. So you can have this first keyframe like from zero to 60, let's say those seconds or um, zero to 60 opacity. You can make it that be really fast. And then kind of like from the rest of the 60 to um, 100%, you can have it go a little more slower. So a little more kind of like pulsating, right? So uh, to do that, all you have to do is highlight the actual keyframes just by clicking right in this little gray area, just dragging right over it. Right. Then right click on one of these little uh, keyframes, go to keyframe assistant, then go to easy ease. And then top right, right here on your two bar is called two bar <laughs> uh, two bar is called the graph editor. And this is what you definitely want. So by default, I believe your edit uh, for your graph is going to be value edit. And if it doesn't look like how mine is, you're like, so I'm freaking out, bro. It doesn't look like yours. Right click somewhere on the actual graph canvas. Right. And then do edit speed graph. This is what you want. So you're going to have these little yellow squares. Um, that's just going to basically represent the zero keyframe that you made, the half a second keyframe that you made and the full second keyframe that you made. So like I said before, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little handle here for this first keyframe and we're going to make the beginning be really quick, like really quick and the end be a little more slower. So I'm going to move this very slowly inside, just something like that. Right. And then for this one here, uh, I I'll highlight both of them. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to highlight both of them. You're like, what the hell says so? <clears throat> click on this one individually drag this one in for be, like really be really quick right and then it's just going to drag this very slowly in the middle here and then this one here is going to kind of drag it in and then drag it in just like so so what it should do is when i click off of that when i render this in really quickly you'll see you probably can't actually notice because of how like very small this like amount of change is happening here but there is an honest difference it's probably going to be weird for your eyes to catch unless you're not if you don't know what it does but you'll see it's a very it's more pulsated it's not stagnant and i guess the easy way for me to show you guys this just so you guys can like fix your eyes to understand what look what you're looking at what i'm gonna quickly do i'm gonna one second don't do this this is just for the sake of just showing you guys if you wanted you can do it um but very simple things you can do i'm gonna take my position here i'm gonna keyframe this drag this outside go to one keyframe or zero keyframes here put the uh no i want this to be there and then keyframe this on the outside so it's going to go from the outside to the inside in the middle here so if i just keyframe it now or i see me pre-render it <clears throat> you'll see how very stagnant this little sort of animation is from going from outside to inside of this canvas right if i just see you see how it's just kind of like robotic -y and just kind of like just like i said very stagnant motions if i go ahead and do that easy ease though just like i said this is just so i can literally just show you guys to fix your eyes to understand what's happening I'm going to make just kind of pull these two in really quickly. Then I'll re-render it. You'll see that it'll be very quick and like very quick to finish. So it's going to have this very cool little middle motion that kind of just makes it a little more smooth. So now remember how the original was. Now you see how kind of like smooth and a little more quicker, uh, quick it is. You could definitely mess around with that just by like uh, the graph going back into the graph. And if you want it to be slower, you move this farther in. If you want the end to be really quick, you can just move this in just like so. Re-render it. So it'll be kind of slow coming in, but really quick toward uh or opposite excuse me really slow in the uh, beginning no really quick in the beginning really you'll s just look right you see how quick it is in the start and then kind of slow at the end so that's because of the graph itself right so you can definitely do that see how like oh i guess the uh the amount of where the top is will be faster i, I don't know i mixed those up in the beginning but um yeah so that's literally just to show you guys the uh what it does <laughs> uh let's fix this and then that's where it should be and now we're, we're back where we were cool out of the graph so yeah that's what those dot dots uh the dots that are doing right now it's just kind of just making it a little more slow a little more methodical a little more thought out just kind of like a little more animated right so just for the sake of just knowing how to do it i only have one dot repeating if i wanted to repeat all the way let's say for like five seconds you want your your starting soon screen to be five seconds it doesn't have to be five seconds it can be as long as you help if you if as long as you want it excuse me if you just make it repeat like the actual um uh in obs you want to make it repeat on um, to do that I'm just going to go, I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just going to say five seconds is my whatever, right? So right here, this is at hundred percent. The half a second is at zero. The one uh, second is at hundred percent. So the next one should obviously be zero. So basically for that, we don't have to go in and kind of like be, Hey, zero. All we have to do, highlight these, these last two keyframes, control C on your keyboard, 
go to 130 here which is now it's at 130 control v will uh paste so control c is going to copy and control v is going to paste so you can just go on every end of, uh, uh interval here so 230 paste 330 paste and that's going to happen here is just going to basically take what you did over or what you did originally just make it kind of just like flow better now so you can see how that's now blinking for whatever reason if you want to have multiple um excuse me dots blink all you would have to do is kind of like separate the amount of where the animations kind of start excuse me excuse me ah, jesus um the easiest way to do that is go from 100 percent opacity here zero a hundred zero so this next one here so i'm going to say from 130 so uh from half uh, a second and a half to two seconds i'm going to start this other one so number two here see my keyword keyframe the opacity so this is at 100 percent this next to two seconds here should be zero right so i'm going to go here go to zero so this should be going away at 100 and this should be 100 right here right it is okay so for the sake of everything here i'm going to just take these move this out to about maybe four seconds gonna have this one blink i'll just have it like blink once or twice so i'm just gonna go to like three and a half seconds here i think it is on it it is on it okay cool so what's gonna personally what what's gonna happen though is i'm just i'm sorry i'm trying to like <laughs> i'm trying to like think how to make this as not complicated as possible because it's not complicated but i know honestly someone looking at freaking illustrator for the first time or excuse me after effects for the first time is gonna be like flipping the hell out it's not hard it's the same exact thing um, you see this little keyframe here look right here it's at zero this one all the way over here is at 100 percent opacity i don't want that i want to make sure this stays at zero because when this finishes here i'm going to make sure this ends at uh 100 opacity so it's at full and this next one in here brings up this the third dot right so i'm going to make this here also zero so through all of this time here that third square here is not going to be showing that's what we want so if i go over here right this uh this second dot here um, this is hundred percent and then zero. So 230 should be Obviously you guess it for some reason. I don't think I made this hundred or zero now. It's a zero 230 Right and then make it a hundred and then I can take this one. I'll just do it one more time, right? And this should be zero I have to do it one more time because three and a half seconds needs to be a hundred percent The second dot needs to end at a hundred so I'm gonna take this and then just move it over a half a second again and there it is so perfect now i'm going to click on it you'll see this one blinks a couple times and then when it goes away the next one will blink because that's how kind of like loading works right so that one goes away this one now starts to go down in opacity as well this will blink a couple times and this ends at 100 percent opacity makes basically obviously makes it visible right and the third one then comes back in so you can just kind of have those rotate through each other and also i didn't add an easy ease here doesn't really matter but you guys want to do it now but now that's 100 this one will pop back in and this one is kind of like kind of like going dot 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 so it all depends on what you kind of want to do but you can see in full animation speed now kind of right it's a little bit more static than it needs to be also this should have started on the same time <clears throat> it should have been right here i don't know why i gave it another full second you see how like how it just got like get like really hiccupy or or kind of like very stagnant or just that empty space that just happened that you know is not supposed to happen it's because i had to start these at the same time which makes a lot more sense when i think about it um yeah let's just let this go and perfect so you can see it now 100 0 100 0 that 100 0 100 0 that one comes back in just like so and you can just rotate you can just kind of like almost copy and paste this entire thing over and over again but now that that is basically done right like i said i'm just gonna have it stop at five seconds for the sake of the video I'm gonna just quickly show you guys one other thing that I wanted to end up doing. So, fit to 100%, you can see the bar here. I wanna show you guys this bar. So, really quickly, if I go to the bar right here, um, whatever you actually have layer styles wise inside Photoshop, as long as After Effects also has them, which mostly they will do. Um, so, gradient in this case here, whatever you have in Photoshop will also translate into After Effects. So, if I drop down here, go to layer styles right here, uh, gradient overlay right here, this will also be here. The same exact gradient overlay that's in Photoshop, right? So I'm gonna keyframe the angle. This is what I was talking about, angle. We're gonna go to the end of however you want the length of your actual video to be, uh, five seconds and a half, you know, five and a half seconds. Take this, and we're just gonna rotate it counterclockwise, excuse me, clockwise, it's basically gonna be positive, all the way up until 360. If I wanted to type in 360, I could have, but I'm just gonna drag my mouse to the right, right? So during this time, you'll see this color here, you know, kind of go from like this angle, all the way to this angle and kind of flip maybe like i think it's like maybe three times it should flip um see how this full rotation is happening right now 
and this right here will just kind of give you guys like a loading sort of vibe to it because this is kind of like you know kind of like circling right so you mostly when you think of like loading you think of like either the dot dot dots that we did or the circle animation um yeah I'm just basically just waiting for this to render out um also to keep in mind as well like i said those little uh these little bars are kind of like going through and whatnot that'd be kind of cool for like a little loading kind of scene kind of thing um but just, let me just show you just wait also, I probably could have made, I could have easy eased it, but for the sake of the video, whatever. You guys already know how to easy ease, but I would always suggest when you do any kind of motion, do easy ease. But you can see, it kind of looks pretty cool, right? So, all this little very small, just kind of like things that you're doing, will just look really, really good. So, last but not least, um, yeah, all you have to do to add it to render queue, I believe it's composition, uh, add to render queue, or press control M on your keyboard. And then for the settings, I believe I just do it as so. I just do quality best. Um, resolution at best if for whatever reason maybe you kind of like have like a starting soon screen maybe for some reason you show yourself or whatever you needed to be transparent if you need it to be transparent it happens over here but for this this is perfectly fine press okay right format avi or you can use probably mov uh doesn't really matter quick time right here quick time right here uh i don't think it matters i just like to use avi for just i guess personal reasons um channel here are uh, rgb but like I said, if you wanted to be transparent, if you didn't have a background in Photoshop and or in after, uh, excuse me, After Effects, you can just have it be transparent by making sure you pick RGB plus Alpha, which will make it make sure that the background that you already had transparent in After Effects will render out also transparent in um, After Effects as well, right? So once you have that, you press OK. And for whatever reason, if you had audio, you make sure you had your audio settings all, all good and whatnot um, right here. So it should be, I believe, I don't know what is the best or what's the most minimum or whatever, but I believe 48 is pretty good. I don't know if you need any higher, like, I don't know if it's DVD quality. I forgot what that whole like momentum thing or that whole gist is. Um, but yeah, I think auto should be fine if you do have audio already in there. And then of course your output, save it as whatever you guys want to. And when you render it out, you're pretty much all good to go. So as simple as the tutorial was, I did not mean to drag it out as long as I possibly did. But honestly, I hope that I gave you guys enough ideas, enough like kind of like closure on how this kind of whole system works. If you guys are new to After Effects, as I personally know myself, it was a mess. I just felt like it was like impossible to learn After Effects. But when you learn it, it's honestly as simple as like keyframes and just a couple effects. Relax. There's a, lot, a crap ton of other things you can do. But for the stuff that I do personally, it's not too hard, not too difficult whatsoever. Um, but yeah. I do hope you guys enjoyed what I did with the bar, by the way, I would totally advise you guys to do that same exact thing with the actual text for starting soon. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I would definitely do it for the gradient overlay here too. So change the angle around. So that spins as well. Maybe have it be opposite. Oh, you kind of tell me that's not sick. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. Of course, 20 likes on the video equals a secret down below, which mostly be the PSD of the video, the after effects. I mean, I guess I'll give you guys that too. I, 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 it'll probably come up with like missing files and whatnot because just just corrupted. I don't I don't really know, but I'll give you guys both just in case. But it's a very cool vibe to it. And honestly, if you guys want to see me do more kind of like fun little videos in the sense of like cool little animations you can do for a theme, that'd be honestly really fun for me to learn. And as well, it's just kind of fun for you guys to learn as well. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I much love, just love you guys so very much for the support I've been having recently. It's been freaking insane with like the whole Selfie products. Quick plug, selfie.com slash SOHQ for any packs as low as $5, as low as $3 actually. Um, yeah, just straight up, love you guys so very much. Uh, like the live stream we actually had, $100 dono came in. Freaking, uh, just all the support is quite ridiculous. And I just, so you guys know, I do seriously, seriously appreciate it. And with that being said, I'm a peace out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. The whole series that's going to be coming hopefully as well if you guys enjoy it. And uh, yeah, talk to you guys later. That's so, so HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later.